Second Samuel 20. The Revolt of Sheba. There happened to be a troublemaker there named Sheba, son of Bikri, the cry, a man from the tribe of Benjamin. Sheba blew a ram's horn and began to chant, Down with the dynasty of David, we have no, in, no interest in the son of Jesse. Come on, you men of Israel, back to your homes. So all the men of Israel deserted David and followed Sheba, son of Bikri. But the men of Judah stayed with their king and es escorted him from the Jordan River to Jerusalem. When David came to, to his palace in Jerusalem, he took the ten concubines he had left to look after the palace and placed them in seclusion. Their needs were provided for, for, but he no longer slept with them. So each of them lived like a widow until she died. Then the king told Amasa, Mobilize the army of Judah within three days and report back at that time. So Amasa went out to notify Judah, but it took him longer than the time he had been given. Then David said to Abishai, Sheba, son of Bikri, is going to hurt us more than Absalom did. Quick, take my troops and chase him after him before he gets into a fortified town where we can't reach him. So Abishai and Joab, together with the king's bodyguard and all the mighty warriors, set out for, from Jerusalem to go after Sheba. As they arrived at the great stone in, in Gibeon, Amasa met them. Joab was wearing his military tunic with a dagger strapped to his belt. As he stepped forward to greet Amasa, he slipped the dagger from its sheath. How are you, my cousin? Joab said, and took him by the beard with his right hand as though to kiss him. Amasa didn't notice the dagger in his left hand, and Joab stabbed him in the stomach with it so that his insides gushed out onto the ground. Joab did not need a str to strike again, and Amasa soon died. Joab and his brother Abishai left him lying there and continued after Sheba. One of Joab's younger men shouted to Amasa's troops, If you are for Joab and David, come and follow Joab. But Amasa lay in his blood in the middle of the road. And Joab's men, man saw that everyone was stopping to stare at him. So he pulled him off the road into a field and threw a cloak over him. With Amasa's body out of the way, everyone went on with Joab to capture Sheba, son of the Cree. Meanwhile, Sheba traveled through all the tribes of Israel and eventually came to the town of Abel, Beth and Maaka, all the members of his own clan, the Bikrites, assembled for battle and followed him into the town. When Joab's forces arrived, they attacked Abel, Beth, Maaka. They built a siege ramp against the town's fortifications and began battering down the wall. But a wise woman in the town called out to Joab, Listen to me, Joab. Come over here so I can talk to you. As he approached, the woman asked, Are you Joab? I am, he replied. So she said, Listen carefully to your servant. I'm listening, he said. Then she continued, There used to be a saying, If you want to settle an argument, ask advice at the town of Abel. I am one who is peace-loving and faithful in Israel, but you are destroying an important town in Israel. Why do you want to devour what belongs to the Lord? And Joab replied, Believe me, I don't want to devour or destroy your town. That's not my purpose. All I want is a man named Sheba, son of Bikri, from the hill country of Ephraim, who has revolted against King David. If you hand over this one man to me, I will leave the town in peace. All right, the woman replied. We will throw his head over the wall to you. Then the woman went to all the people with her wise advice. And they cut off Sheba's head and threw, out, threw it out to Joab. So he blew the ram's horn and called his troops back from, from the attack. They all returned to their homes, and Joab returned to the king of Jerusalem at Jerusalem. Now Joab was the commander of the army of Israel. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was captain of the king's bodyguard. Adon Adoniram was in charge of forced labor. 
Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was royal historian. Shiva was the court secretary. Zadok and Abiathar were the priests. And Ira, a descendant of Jer, was David's personal priest.